Hey guys, Ali here from Local Knowledge, and today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite tools slash toys, and that is the California Flyer. The reason I want to make this video is pretty simple. I fished the heck out of this this year, I had great success with it, and I saw a lot of people flat out doing it wrong. And I had to learn, actually. The guys at California Flyer kind of dialed me in because at first I wasn't doing it right. So this bait is absolutely incredible. It is very well thought out. It's molded from an actual flying fish. It will get bit every bit as good as a regular flying fish with a few advantages. And those advantages being it's super tough allowing for a rebite. That's number one for me. When they miss it or smash it, a lot of times with a dead bait, I've got to bring that bait in real quick, send another one out as fast as I can. It takes time and the fish may have moved on. With this guy, more times than not, the wings are gonna be fine. These are super tough mylar construction and it can sustain multiple bites, sometimes five, six, seven bites when they're really just blowing up on it and not super in the mood to smash and eat the bait. To me, that's a huge advantage. Obviously, there's some cost savings and some headache savings dragging around dead baits. Now that said, I'm never leaving the, the dock with just one or the other, unless it's sort of an off season thing or I'm doing something else. I'll always have a California flyer ready to go. We might be out chasing kelp patty, yellowtail and Dorado. I see a spot that wasn't supposed to be there. At least I got something I can put up in the air and you know have a legit shot at getting a bite with. So a few things about this bait. Number one is just the proper assembly and actually storage. And this is something I've come up with. Everybody gets on the boat is like, ooh, I gotta do that. So I figured I'd share it with you. This is a Plano XL Pro Latch storage box. I love these things. These are awesome way to transport stuff to and from the boat, store stuff in the boat that's just too big to go into a regular drawer. So in here, I've got a bunch of plastic bags with my pins. I just got some release clips and swivels I've thrown in there. But this is the best place for your California flyer to live when you're not fishing. It's all here, easy to get at, and it's clear so I can see what's going on. If I'm on the boat, I'm gonna just pull my bait out. First things first, I'm gonna put my wings in. Really easy. They go right in the slots here on the side. Wings in. You got these little carbon fiber pins. There's holes in the top. Like I said, this stuff's all real engineered. Sometimes you might have to manipulate the wing just a little bit to get the pin to go all the way through. And that's it. You don't have to totally bury the pins in either. I've never lost one and they give you extra ones anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my second wing in and pin it as well. It's probably my favorite thing about this bait is just how thought out it is. And it's designed for one thing, catching big tuna off the coast of Southern California. Now we found it catches them everywhere, which is not surprising if you fish this a bunch, but it's just an awesome, awesome, well thought out bait. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do now that I've got my wings in is I'm just gonna put the hook set into the lure. Just gonna run it through here in the top of the lure. This is another brilliant thing about this lure is there's a channel that's made to hold this hook and the secondary crimp, which holds a trailing hook. I just push it right in there and it locks itself in almost automatically. So now I've got my main hook in. Now this is my tail hook. You can see on the bait that they have actually a channel to put your tail hook in, but we aren't using that anymore. It seems to get, seems to stick the fish a lot better if you run it kind of like you'd rig a dead, a dead bait with that treble hook out the back. Okay, so here's where I see people get goofy and even having buddies rig them on my boat while we're fishing has gotten a little weird. So my goal with this bait is to make this hook set stay in it as long as I absolutely can until it actually goes into a fish's mouth. So in order to do that, I'm taking these rubber bands that are provided I'm gonna run one or two down the leader. I double it up first, because I like it on there really, really tight. And another thing is, at the end of the day, make sure you remove all the rubber bands. They aren't really good for the finish of the lure, and you wanna strip them down naked before you put them back in the storage box, you know, and rinse the hook set off really good. So you can see, I'm putting that doubled up rubber band, and these things are super tough if you've dealt with them. I don't know what they're made out of, but they're impossible to break. I'm gonna put one up there, right up against the eye of the hook. I'm gonna take a second one here, and go right down the leader. And I'm gonna go right at the crimp here, go over the loop, 
and then I'm gonna lock down the front end of the crimp. And what I want that to do is just give me a lot of strength here for when I'm dragging that thing around and it's jerking all over the place, you know, bouncing out of the water and whatnot. Okay, so here's where I've learned a little trick that I haven't seen a lot of guys do. I'm sure other guys have figured it out as well. Initially, I was taking a rubber band and I was feeding it up over the tail, hooking myself on the treble, ah, damn, onto the next one, coming up here and grabbing the hook. I've actually changed that up. I just take the rubber band, I put it over the point of the hook, single uh, wrap, come back through this way, I'm gonna wrap it around, gotta kind of stretch it tight there because this is gonna be a very snug fit. And then come back over the point of the hook without stabbing yourself, okay? I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but come in the other way because when I pull on this, it does put some pressure on that hook and I don't want it leaning one way or the other. I want it to stay pretty much straight up and down like you see there. Okay, so now I've got my hook secured. Now I've got my crimp and my eye secured. Last thing to do is just make sure that the uh, rebel with some trouble here doesn't go too far. Stab myself already. Okay, over the, the single part of the hook and I'm gonna go just around the base of the tail and I usually will come one hook over on the treble from where I started. I'm gonna do the same thing, but in the opposite direction as I did on the other part. So this way I'm not having to try to lace a rubber band over the hook and all that stuff. It makes it really quick and simple. When we're going out and we're fishing the California Flyer, I always have one rigged in the box ready to go in its own box and then I'll have two or three more ready to fire. When they're under your boat, they decide they wanna bite. The faster you can fling baits out to them, the more fish you will catch, period. So, okay, now we're rigged up, right? Let's talk about how to use this bait. Where this lure really shines and what makes it so versatile is the ability to move and fish this. So in other words, if I know the fish are around or there's a breezer that I see, first thing that comes out. And because it's so durable and the hooks are in it so good, I can walk this thing right into a breezer. Get smoked once, oh, missed it, jumps up in the air, send it back down, smoked again, boom, I'm tight. This will allow me to move around and present a bait over a much wider area than I could ever do with a dead bait. That's what I love about it. Now, you don't run this like a yummy flyer. With a yummy flyer, I'm gonna go seven, eight, nine knots. It's just gonna be skipping out of the water and flying as much as it's skipping. Very, very effective technique, but a lot of times you need a lot of real estate to just keep making those yummy passes. With this guy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk this around at like three, four, even five knots and I'm not gonna leave it down in the water like I would with a dead bait kind of plowing. The trick with this is, is just keep this part touching the water. And that's why it's rigged up here so you do get more of this angle. And you're just gonna dangle the tail, three, four, five knots, you can cover a little bit of ground. I'll put both motors in gear, set the autopilot once I kind of got the line I wanna be on, and then work this guy with the rod. Get him up in the water, make him splash down, back to the tail. Keep him walking, keep him moving and you will find they will go nuts for this thing. I feel like that extra little bit of motion really draws their eyes and gets you some bites and you're an active participant. You're not just sitting there drifting, waiting for something to happen. You're seeing fish, you're chasing fish, you're making stuff happen. Now, if you just have a couple guys on the boat, you get smoked, you're fighting a fish, you're dealing with that fish, you can absolutely just lay, lay this thing on the water from the kite clip, have it sitting out there and it will get bit. No question, we've hooked tons of fish on it but my preferred method is to keep this bait moving, going from breezer to breezer sometimes. I'll just lift it up in the air and I'll troll a little faster, 10 knots, go to the next breezer, slow it down, drop this guy in, I'm ready to get a bite. Same thing if I'm cruising around looking for him, I get him on the meter. A lot of times you'll see this hanging from the kite clip behind my boat, just being drug around, you know, eight, 10, 12 knots. As soon as I get that mark, I'm gonna slow the boat down, I'm gonna drop this thing behind the boat, work it a little bit and I'm getting bites. I'm, when I carry this thing suspended from the kite, I can go from in the air to potentially getting a bite in just a matter of seconds. I don't have to bring the kite back out and send it out. If you like this video, please give us a like and a follow down below and also leave us comments. Your comments are what shape these future videos. Let us know what you wanna see and we'll do our best also to answer any questions you have. Thanks so much.